Hello and welcome to this quick summary video of Newton's laws. We're going to be talking about what those laws are, also a little bit about how to use them, and along the way we'll introduce the idea of what an equilibrium is. So Newton's laws are observations and basically quantifications of those observations of what everyday motion of objects entails, or how it happens, and why. Now, you've probably heard of them before, and you've probably heard the first one stated as an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and that's a good starting point. The second law is nothing more than a quantification of the first law. It tells us exactly how a force will act on an object and change its motion. Okay, so that's the famous F equals MA, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And then there's the third law, which describes a certain relationship that exists between special pairs of forces. Um, and you have probably heard that one referred to as equal and opposite reactions. We're going to take a quick look at each one of these in turn. So Newton's first law is, although you already know, this idea of an object at rest tends to stay at rest, it's more correctly paraphrased as an object will only change its motion if acted upon by force. So what we mean by that is suppose you have a ball that's just sitting there. That ball, in the absence of any forces, is just going to continue to sit there. And this condition where there are no forces acting on an object is the criteria for a condition called equilibrium. This absence of forces can actually happen in two ways. In this case, the ball was stationary and no forces were acting on it, so it continued to remain stationary. That is a describing a static equilibrium case. On the other hand, we might have had a ball which had some initial velocity, and that ball just kept on moving with that same velocity, because again, there were no forces acting on it. Since there's no forces, it's equilibrium again, but since it's moving, we call that dynamic equilibrium. Now, Newton's second law just takes that first law and quantifies it. Okay, so that's F equals MA, and what that's saying is that in order to give an acceleration of A to some object of mass M, that requires a force F. Notice that this is a vector equation the force that you apply sets the direction of the acceleration that results from that force. In terms of what's going on with equilibria, this is just saying if F equals zero, that's how you can identify a case of equilibrium where there's no change to the motion. Okay, so we still have our two cases of equilibria. F equals zero applies to both. And whether it's static or dynamic just depends on that initial velocity, whether there was any or there wasn't. Let's think about a game of tug of war. Now in this situation, there are actually several forces acting. There's a force applied by the person on the left, a force applied by the person on the right, and the force of gravity. So we might ask, none of those forces are zero. Is a condition of equilibrium at all possible in this case? So again, turn to everyday experience. We know that if both players are pulling equally hard, then the rope won't move. Everything will just stay in a nice static equilibrium. So how does this agree with F equals MA? F equals MA is actually talking about the sum of all the various forces that are acting on the object. So if we're thinking about the rope, there's the three forces acting on it, if the sum of those forces as vectors is equal to the zero vector, then indeed we have a case of equilibrium. So that applies to both Newton's first and second laws. They're really talking about an object staying in its current state of motion unless there is some net force acting on the object. So you can have forces acting on it all you like, it's just a question of what that net force ends up being. If the net force is zero, then you're in equilibrium. Alright, the last law 
does in fact talk about a force by itself, or rather in a pair with one other force. So it's not talking about net forces, it's talking about specific ones and forming pairs. And this equal and opposite reaction idea is best motivated by some examples. So first, let's think about a book which is just present somewhere around the Earth. The Earth, of course, exerts a gravitational force pulling downward on the book. Now, Newton's third law says that there's an equal and opposite reaction to that. And what that means is that the book is exerting the same magnitude, that's the equal part, of gravitational force upward, not downward, that's the opposite part, on the Earth. As another example, let's think about a case which we'll have to describe in detail in terms of both Newton's second and third laws. So suppose that we take this book now, which has this nice pair of gravitational forces acting on the book and on the Earth, and put it on a table. Now we know there's a force pulling down on the book, and therefore, since it's not accelerating because it's just sitting on the table, we know by Newton's second law that there has to be an equal and opposite force pushing up. But this is by the second law because we're using the fact that the acceleration is zero. And we're talking about the fact that it's acting on the book. Okay, So gravity pulls down on the book, the table must push up on the book. And those must be equal in order to have no acceleration. That's all an application of Newton's second law, F equals ma, or rather F net equals ma. But we can find a third law force pair by now noting, okay, there's this table pushing up on the book. Newton's third law does apply in this situation, but it's talking about the force exerted by the book down on the table, being equal and opposite to the force exerted by the table up on the book. So it can be quite tricky because equal and opposite can arise from both the second and the third laws. So how can we distinguish what's going on? So there's a couple of tricks that we can use in order to help make sure that we are in fact thinking about a third law force pair. So if you're talking about a third law force pair, the first thing to notice is that the force is going to be the same. In the first case we talked about the gravitational force by the earth on the book paired with the gravitational force by the book on the earth. And similarly we were talking about the normal force exerted by the table on the book and matching that with the normal force exerted by the book on the table. So the force must be the same type of force. Gravity with gravity, normal with normal, friction with friction, etc. The other thing is that notice they don't act on the same object. When we talked about the Newton's um, second law giving us the fact that the gravitational force on the book was equal to the normal force on the book, or opposite, that was two forces acting on the book. In the third law pair, we're talking about two forces that are acting on different objects. And in fact, those different objects are obtained just by swapping the agent and receiver. And we can remember that in equation form by using this notation where the subscripts denote the agent and the receiver. The force by A on B is negative of the force by B on A. And that negative sign carries the information about being opposite. And the magnitudes carry the information about being equal. All right, so we've covered quite a bit in this short little video. We've just summarized that Newton's first and second laws are just telling us the criteria for when the motion of an object changes and exactly how that happens. We've also seen that if there is no net force, then we have a special case of equilibrium, and we can subdivide that based on whether or not the object was moving. And then we've also talked about Newton's third law, talking about this equal and opposite reactions, and helped identify, by means of a couple of little rules, whether or not we're talking about a third law force pair or actually something that happens to be equal and opposite based on the situation due to the absence of any acceleration, i.e. through Newton's second law. So hopefully this video has been helpful. In order for us to test that, here are a couple of questions that I'm going to leave you with. The first one is, in that example for Newton's third law force pairs, we said that the gravitational force exerted by the Earth on the book 
is the same as the gravitational force exerted by the book on the earth. But we know that if we let go of the book, the book falls to the earth, but the earth doesn't suddenly rush up to meet the book. So can you use Newton's laws to explain why this doesn't happen? And second, I've got two statements here, which are actually incorrect. And the challenge for you is go ahead and use Newton's laws and try to figure out where these statements have gone wrong and see if you can correct them.